Hey everybody, in this video we take a look at Stephen King's most infamous novel, the 1977 Bachman book, Rage. We'll show you what to look for when trying to identify first US and first UK editions of this long out of print book, as well as provide some historical context, as well as thoughts on the quality of the novel itself. Hey guys, so today we're going to look at the first edition of Rage by Stephen King. Um, this book was actually written by King in 1965 when he was a high school student um, under the title Getting It On. Uh, it's, I'm sure you guys have read it, but it's a story about um, a kid who holds his class hostage with a gun. Um, the book was eventually published in 1977 um, as a mass market paperback original um, by Signet. So this is the uh, this is the first appearance of the book. It was a paperback um, under the pseudonym Richard Bachman. It was the second time King used a pseudonym following uh, John Swithin in 1972. Uh, why Richard Bachman? The story is that um, when the publisher asked him to pick a pseudonym, um, why a pseudonym? Because it was a really early work. It wasn't um, as mature writing as what he was doing at the time. Uh, and so he um, was reading a novel um, by Donald E. Westlake under the name Richard Stark. So he took the Richard, and then apparently uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive record was playing. So he took the Bachman from that, Richard Bachman. Um, anyway, uh, the book was pulled out of print in the late 90s or right around the turn of the century because um, uh, school shooting uh, perpetrators had claimed to have read the book and had been influenced by the book. Uh, so King um, naturally didn't want the book to remain in print, so he pulled it, and that's why um, it's so difficult to find copies of the original, uh, as well as um, the Bachman book Omnibus collection from 1985. Anyway, um, here is a look at the original 1977 uh, book. Um, it is a you know, a uh, typical mass market paperback. Um, you know, uh, the one, one thing of note, uh, recently there has been a um, spate of bootleg copies of this floating around the internet. Um, don't get fooled. Uh, one way to check whether your copy is a bootleg is the text block should be yellow, uh, not white. Um, also this Signet logo here, um, there's a bit of a margin between the Signet logo and the end of the uh, wrapper, so it shouldn't be pressed up against the edge. Um, it also features a price of 150 I think that's there on both. Anyway, you can tell if your copy is a first printing because it has a printing line that, can you see that? That goes down to, oop, what's going on there? That goes down to one. Um, it's weird. Anyway, um, that is uh, that is Rage, the U.S. first edition of Rage. And now we are going to look at the U.K. first edition of Rage. This is the uh, book, um, the British edition of the book. It was published um, by New English Library, as also as a mass market paperback original. Um, Weirdly, copies of this book um, never seem to be read. That's something I've noticed, right? Like, the spines are usually perfect, um, uncreased, and they, you know, they, they often look as nice as this one does. Uh, looks brand new and unread. Um, I've, I've rarely, if ever, seen, you know, creased up red copies in the UK, of the UK state, so I don't know if you guys over there don't read these or what. Um, but it was published um, in uh, 1983 for the first time in the UK. So this is six years after the um, US edition came out. Uh, you can check to see if your copy is a first printing. 
I don't know that there were later printings of this really. I don't, I don't recall seeing that, but uh, if you look at the copyright page, um, it'll say uh, first published, uh, first NEL paperback edition, February 1983 here, um, with no indication of printing. So, um, so that's what you're looking for. Uh, and anyway, um, it's uh, oh, it's got a printed price of uh, one one pound fifty on the back UK. And that is uh, that's the UK rage. I don't really have too much to say about this otherwise. Um, so there you have it. Thank you very much to Noah for showing those amazing first edition copies of Rage. Um, for a Stephen King trivia nut like me, Rage is sort of a Pandora's box of just limitless detail and information and context and subtext and just all the things that I really enjoy um, about the Stephen King universe and collecting Stephen King and praise be to Stephen King historian par excellence Bev Vincent for documenting in multiple uh, venues over decades um, Stephen King's backstory and history behind particular titles in the Stephen King catalog. So the story, as I understand it, about rage. So Stephen King, 1966, he's a senior in high school, a senior in high school, and he writes the first 40 or so pages of the manuscript, which came to be called Getting It On. And he put it away. He went to college, completed college. And in 1970, he found the 40 page manuscript and he set about working on it and fleshing it out. And then he finished it in 1971. This was three years before the publication of Carrie. And it was actually his first attempt at um, getting a manuscript into the hands of Doubleday and getting it published. He, he submitted it to Doubleday and he met his future mentor and editor, Bill Thompson, um, through that process. And the book did not end up getting picked up by Doubleday, although Thompson thought that it had a lot of, a lot of potential and he was very encouraging um, to Stephen King. And so fast forward a few years, Carrie comes out, Salem's Lot, The Shining, Stephen King's brand is starting to pick up steam. And at this point, he had multiple early novels um, that he was interested in seeing published. And at this point, he's still only in his 20s or very early 30s. And he goes back to Doubleday and says, hey, do you think that um, I have these extra, these older novels, do you think we could get these published? And Doubleday said, no, you know, the, the prevailing knowledge of the day, the wisdom of the day in publishing was that the market couldn't handle more than one book per year. Um, it was a delicate ecosystem and too much product would throw the ecosystem out of whack. So they said, no, um, we can't do that because Stephen King was continuing to produce new work and in, in many ways, better work. And um, it just cracks me up now when I think about that only one book in a year, it's all the market can handle, like paging James Patterson, who I'm pretty sure now has half a dozen books a month in various series and in various genres. Um, and he's doing just fine. But anyway, be, that's the way it was in the 70s. One book per year per author. So Stephen King approached his paperback publisher, uh, New American Library, and he pitched them on the idea. But <clears> he <throat> had the idea, he didn't want them to be published as Stephen King, um, Stephen King books. He wanted uh, to use a pseudonym because... Um, Almost from the beginning, Stephen King, I'm surely not so much anymore, 
but early in his career was plagued by this idea is it is it the writing is it me like in the quality of my work or is it the brand are people responding to the quality or are they responding to Stephen King and so a sort of a fascinating experiment the idea to put out these early novels under a pseudonym uh, with no marketing no publicity no push and the first one of those was Rage um, came out in 1977 in a Signet mass market paperback original for a buck fifty, and um, originally the pseudonym was going to be Guy Pillsbury, but that name is much more closely associated with Stephen King. And word had already gotten out at New American Library that Stephen King was publishing under a pseudonym, and. Um, so he had to pull it back and, and rethink the pseudonym. And um, Richard Bachman came about because, you know, it's what was in the room with him at the time, a novel by Richard Stark or Donald Westlake on his desk. So there's Richard. And then on the turntable, um, You Just Ain't Seen Nothing Yet by Bachman Turner Overdrive. Richard Bachman. There it is. And I think it's a great pseudonym, but... Um, regardless, it gets published 1977. Um, as far as I know, there was never uh, another printing, uh, so it's just the first edition. It's one and done. It showed up in gas stations and bus bus depots and grocery stores, and it just it filled a rack and then it went away. Um, people that bought paperbacks bought them to read and. So finding a copy now in really, really nice shape is hard, especially because nobody knew that they needed to care or that they should care about this author or this book. And so it quietly goes out of print. And then in 1984, 85, Stephen King was outed as Richard Bachman. Thinner was the first Bachman novel that was uh, published as a hardcover original, received some promotion. Um, Stephen King flew too close to the pseudonym Sun and he was found out. So in 1985, the early, the four early Bachman books, um, Rage, The Running Man, Long Walk, Roadwork, were published as an omnibus um, called The Bachman Books. And this is the first place that most people probably experienced rage. It's the first, um, the four novels are in this one book and rage is the first one. Um, the omnibus is fairly easy to find um, in paperback, in trade paperback, which looks an awful lot like this hardcover edition in terms of artwork and especially as a mass market paperback that was printed and reprinted and printed again if you really want to read rage it is out there in in used bookstores but the omnibus has a fairly um embittered introduction which is interesting in its own right it's called why i was bachman by stephen king so rage exists it's once again in print um, from 1985 on um, into the 90s. It starts to show up in relation to school shootings. People that um, commit school shootings, either the book's in their locker or they quote from the book. And this isn't just a one-off type of fluky thing. Um, the it started to happen over and over and the omnibus was republished in 1996 to tie in with the publication of the Richard Bachman book the regulators this is another another edition in trade paperback I don't think there was ever a hardcover of this omnibus 1996 and it all it has um, a different introduction, the importance of being Bachman, and the two 
introductions, the two essays side by side are really interesting. Um, but anyway, so 1996, this book comes out and Rage is, continues to be in even a new book, a new omnibus in print, in publication, in the public eye. And the school shootings continue. And in 1998, Stephen King asked for the book to be pulled out of print. I mean, he's one of the most famous, powerful authors um, in the world, and Rage really is a relatively minor, although infamous, work in his, in his bibliography. And if he started it in 1966, he was 18. He finished it in 1971, he was like 23. And um, by the end of the 90s, he was in his early 50s. And there's a heck of a, a heck of a lot of difference between a 51 year old man and an 18 year old man. And Stephen King um, realized that he couldn't really remember or relate to whatever it was that drove him and made him seemingly so embittered and so angry. And he didn't feel a strong connection or affinity for the work. And he let it fall out of print. And the Bachman books Omnibus was re-released um, with just the three uh, titles minus Rage. And since those three other titles have all been released in standalone editions um, and Rage has been out of print ever since. But it is um, easily found on the secondary market. Um, Stephen King published, released a brilliant nonfiction essay uh, uh, entitled Guns, where he talks about the epidemic of mass shootings in American society and provides some common sense suggestions for trying to help with the problem. And he also provides some fascinating and personal um, backstory about Rage and the publication of Rage and why he ultimately let it go out of print and doesn't seem to have mixed feelings about it. He's pretty unequivocal that it's, it's out of print and that's a good thing. But Guns is definitely worth looking up um, I experienced it in the audiobook version, which is not read by Stephen King, but the narrator did an excellent job, and it was um, it was very engaging. So there you have it. In Stephen King's long career, dozens of books, um, collections, sixty plus novels, Rage is the only one that he has let he has forced to go out of print so famous and so connected is stephen king with the pop culture psyche of america that um there was some question that his work may have influenced um angry young people to commit um horrible violent acts and he let it go out of print on some level, I'm conflicted about that. I feel like there were no piece of art single-handedly puts a gun in somebody's hand and causes them to commit an atrocity. Um, I couldn't help but think of Rage when I read Mr. Mercedes for the first time because it, it has a scene um, where somebody drives a car into a crowd of people and kills people. And sort of around that time, may have just been a coincidence, you started hearing about this more and more in the news. People using vehicles as battering rams and killing people. And I thought, oh my God, what did Stephen King put that idea in the universe? Had he heard about it first and was, and was, did life inspire art or was it vice versa? But I wondered how he felt about that and if Mr. Mercedes may end up getting pulled out of print 
for similar reasons. I'm glad that it hasn't. And at some level, I wish that Rage was still available. But on the other hand, I totally get where Stephen King was coming from. And the book is, is not, honestly, it's not hard to find. If you just want a copy of Rage and you don't care about the condition of the book that it's in, you can find one for pretty cheap. Um, in fact, uh, there's also an audiobook version of Rage from, I guess, sometime in the early 80s. That was actually the way I experienced it. I got the file and I downloaded it and it has this stern male narrator's voice and it kind of sounds like he's you're listening to him through a vent in the wall and he's talking in another room sort of like this rage by richard beckman and so maybe it wasn't the best way to experience the book it wasn't the clearest it wasn't the most engaging but it was fine anyway i just listened to that in the last couple of years and i found it um really interesting i had tried to read rage at various times over the years and i i just couldn't get into it um there's a, a concept of juvenilia or work from an author's childhood or early early life early career before things really started to click and it's not up to the same quality and it shouldn't be held to the same standard and i wouldn't necessarily consider rage to be juvenilia but for some reason when i think back on the language i think back on what it was like to listen to it um some books you can listen to and it's like listening to beautiful music or bird song or you read it and it's like your eyes are just dancing with the beauty of the language well listening to rage was a bit like listening to a hive of like churning angry hornets buzzing away it has a bit of that buzz saw quality to it it is raw i mean stephen king himself has called some of his early work raw carry raw but i mean compared to rage makes carry seem like war and peace or or something it's it's raw and it's visceral and bad things do happen. The things that it's most notorious for do happen, but for the most part, it's about class distinctions. It's a set piece, mostly takes place in one room and um, it's not necessarily all it's cracked up to be. It's not my least favorite Bachman book but it's certainly not my most favorite and i i certainly think that it does not deserve the infamous reputation that it has um it is just kind of it's just kind of out there it's just kind of a thing i'm glad that i i'm glad that i experienced it i'm glad that i that i listened to it um I found it very much um, vaguely reminded me of when I was a teenager and I didn't necessarily find that a pleasant place to be for just like the four and a half or five hours of the audiobook listening to it. Um, but it, it was from a Stephen King trivia and historical perspective, just fascinating because it's such a window into his head at that point in his life. And it just boggles the mind to think, um, what if Getting It On had been his first published novel? Where would things have been dramatically different? Um, would he have even written Carrie? I mean, where would the trajectory have taken him? But um, it wasn't. It wasn't his first published novel. And I think, honestly, that's for the best. And if you're a Stephen King completionist, sort of a Stephen King historian, um, you're going to want to have Rage or at least the Bachman books um, in your collection. And you're going to want to have read it. But 
it's um, definitely for cultists and completionists only. I would not recommend it as the place for anyone to start um, on their Stephen King journey. But, well, there you have it. Um, thank you to Bev Vincent for the years and years of historical essays and context and background. Um, I just, I love reading your work and I, I just, I really find it fascinating um, to see the formative process that led to the brand name Stephen King that we all know and love. And thanks as always to Noah Mitchell for um, showing your beautiful first editions and helping make these videos possible. Thanks to you uh, for your support and um, wherever you are, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.